everyone. In this video, we are actually going to do a mini series on product creation. And I've had a couple requests on how to make something editable. So in today's video, we are going to make an editable, editable, editable PowerPoint resource. And I will also show you how to make a fillable PDF. Stay tuned. Hi everyone, my name is Laurieann and if you are new to It's All Primary, welcome here at It's All Primary. We talk about teacher side hustles. And if you are returning, thank you for coming back. <laughs> well, school is almost over. Today was our last day with the students. I had one hour with them. I love blended, don't you? And they were lovely. They were so cute. And I got lovely cards and so many. There were a few emotional children and yeah. That, sometimes the last day of school is tough. <laughs> but it was good. I have still a min time to do or non-instructional time. I don't know what you call it. But by the time this video is released, I will be officially on holidays. I still have a load of stuff in the car to unpack but i just want to say thank you uh so many of you reached out and say they're you're praying for me you know god's got a job i know god's got a job for me and i will be telling you right here <laughs> on this channel when that job shows up because it it will show up the, the one nice thing about not knowing is that i don't plan because i like to plan and when i don't know my grade or my school, I won't plan so I can work on my business, which is the more important thing to do right now. <laughs> Anyways, so again, thank you for all your lovely words and, and encouraging words and prayers. I, I really do appreciate it. So we're talking about having a resource that is editable. Why do we want to do that? First of all, it's a great selling feature. Many teachers, you know, we we think we, we're making a product that is wonderful and buyers will look at that going, yeah, it's almost perfect. Just that little thing they got to fix, right? I don't recommend making all your resources editable. I would look to see maybe one or two pieces of your resource might be worth making editable. That's entirely up to you. The product that I'm making right now is something that I wish I'd done years ago. I've been using ones that I don't like. They were freebies. And I, when I contacted the seller of those ones asking if they were going to expand them, they didn't want to expand them. So I'm just making my own right now. And they are basically labels for things that when I tell students, you need to pull out your notebook your glue stick, your scissors, things like that. I and I only say it once. This is part of classroom management. I say it one time. I'm not going to repeat myself. And so what I do is I have these labels and I t throw them up on the whiteboard. And when they say, what do I bring out? <laughs> right? You'll see them. I'm going to, I'll show you mine. But that is something that I make editable because we all have different wording for certain supplies. For example, I grew up with the word pencil crayon. And I've actually had kids saying, Miss Harold, it's not pencil crayons, it's colored pencils. Okay, <laughs> colored pencils. That is a label that I make editable so that you can change it. You might, they may not be called glue sticks, right? I don't know. I, it's amazing what we just assume everyone calls a, su a supply and they don't. That's why this is editable, this resource. I will show it to you. We'll turn the camera around in a moment. So that's one of the things I'm gonna do. The problem with making something editable is two things. One, you need to make sure you're protecting your clip art artists and the font artists. So I'll show you how to do that. Two, you could get inundated with emails about, I can't open this, this is, I, I don't have the same font. I see it all the time on other sellers products when I um, when I'm looking for something editable it's just one of the things that happens when you create something editable you will get 
a lot more technical questions. So just be prepared for that. So we'll look at that. And then what I'll do is after I've shown you the PowerPoint, and you can make these, I'll show it, I'll show it, I'll show it, I'll show it. But you can make them in Google Slides if you prefer that, and I'll show you where you can convert it to a PowerPoint. The other thing is how to make PDFs fillable. And that's pretty easy. I think a lot of people who've made products before understand you can do something in Google Slides, but you can also do it as uploading a PDF and then filling in boxes. I'll show that one to you as well. That one I definitely do in Google Drive because there's an, an add-on that I use and it's free and it's easy. And I learned this actually years ago at my online school. I didn't realize people were still looking for these. So that's great. I will be happy to show you that. If there is something else that you want to see editable or options with something editable, let me know in the comments below. I don't use it a lot, but I do use it. Okay, let's turn the camera around and we'll get at it. And I'm just, this is something I use when I'm giving instructions and then I don't have to repeat my instructions when asking kids to pull out certain supplies out of their desk. Now I'm going to be doing it two ways. One, I'm going to be doing it just the picture in a frame and then I'm going to be labeling it as well. Here is where the problem is. Pencil crayons. That's what I call them. <laughs> and we, but they're now often called colored pencils. So I want to make some of these editable. Maybe the teacher wants to change the word here for glue stick. I don't know. But this is what you do is you duplicate the slide. So right click duplicate. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove So they're actually there. Now I could choose to put a border around each of these, but I'm not going to. I'll just leave it for now. And then I'm going to go up to File. You can't quite see it up at the top. And I'm going to export it. And I'm going to export it as a JPEG. And I'm going to just do this. Now what I want to do is create a blank slide. And I'm going to format it with a background. So format background and go to picture. Click on insert. And now this slide is, I can't touch anything. I can't click on it. But the, what the buyer can do is they can Go to text box, insert a text box, there you go. And then they can type in their font. Now, one of the things that I need to do is in my description say that the font used is KG fonts. It's available for free, for personal use, and provide a link. When they install Miss Kindergarten, which is the font, and the size is 28. They can have the same consistent fonts. For the ones that they change. Like that. Now I just showed you how to create a page that's editable, but one of the things you've got to do is you've got to put this all in a separate PowerPoint file because this file is going to be saved or exported as a PDF when I'm finished. And if I leave this in this file, it's not editable because it's going to be going as a PDF and as and when it becomes a PDF, it will not be editable. So what I do is I would go up to, to save as. I would create another file that says editable. And I would just have the pages that are editable in the second one. So this one I'm not going to export as a PDF. And then this will be a second file that will go into my product. So I will have a PDF and I will have this 
file. So I'm going to get rid of all the other ones. Whoops, I'll get rid of that one so that it's blank. But I'll get rid of these ones. Delete. Delete. Right, so you just want your editable ones in this file. And then this just gets saved and you will create two files and zip them and upload them to your products. And if you want a video on how to do that when you have multiple products in, in, a, in one resource, let me know. If you don't use PowerPoint, you can do this in Google Slides. So here is the Google Slides. And just like you did or you would do in PowerPoint, you would create a separate file of slides which would be the editable version. So these ones would be called school supplies. You would open up another one, which would be, so you're gonna duplicate and write school supplies editable. And then when you're finished, so for example, with this one, I can go to file and download this as a JPEG right there. So I could remove all these, or like I said, I'll, I'll duplicate it, and then I'll remove this one. And then I can highlight, go to file, download as a JPEG. So that would do, it does the current slide only. I'm just doing one. There is an add-on you can put in your Google Slides or, or your Drive where you can export multiple slides into JPEGs. But I right now I'm just needing one. Now I didn't name it, so it just went under untitled presentation JPEG. So that's now a JPEG. So again, I could make a separate set of slides. So I'm going to go up to File, New, Presentation. I'm going to change the page setup to 8.5 by 11. And then I'm going to click Background. I choose my image. So again, can't click on anything in here. I can insert text boxes. Right. And and again, they can choose their own font or you can suggest a font to them that is already available within Google Slides. That's, again, how you would do it. And then I'm going to download it, the whole thing, as a PowerPoint. And then that gives the buyer a little bit more flexibility with the fonts again. Because the one drawback to Google Slides is the, the fonts for me. That's just a personal preference. So it's very similar in Google Slides as in PowerPoint. Last thing I'm going to show you is if you have a PDF that you want to be fillable, what you can do is you can go to new and upload file. And I'm going to upload a animal report that I made in the PDF, if I can find it. Animal tab. So this is an animal tab book. So if I open this up, there is a page here that students would, if they were in the class, would just write their own information. But maybe you want them to just type it in instead. So it could be opened up in Google Docs is one option. But the other option I want to show you is Doc Hub. So you can make text boxes for typing into in this app. And this app is free. There is a premium version of it, but I've never needed it. So I'm going to click open with Doc Hub. Okay, so here is this document in Doc Hub. And I'm just going to scroll down. And let's just say I wanted students to be able to write something in here. I'm just going to create a text box. 
So I go over here to, there's text field, paragraph field. So let's click paragraph field. And then I'm going to click that in here and just expand it. However much space I want to give the students. Okay, so now I've got this space available for them to write about the life cycle. And then to keep that, I would go up to the three lines and I want to um, download it. Okay, so now I should be able to, let's close this. So as you can see, there is now a blue box here. So the snowy owl starts as a, an owlet, right? So the students can now fill in the PDF without having Acrobat Pro or anything like that. And that's how to make a fillable box in a PDF. Okay, so now that I'm officially on holidays, you might see videos more often on than Tuesdays and Saturdays. You might see three in a week. You might see one in a week. It depends on how focused I am, I am on product creation, but I do have a small list of videos that people would like to see and I will be making them. And my nephew is also volunteered to edit some of these, which means if he's editing the videos, then I can create more and he can just edit them, right? So you really want to be subscribed ding, ding, and click that bell so you get your notifications when videos are uploaded. I will try to stick to the Tuesday, Saturday, but the TPT conference is coming up. A couple other things are coming up. I Like I said, I'll probably be making a couple extra videos, especially in July. I also am going to be making a couple productivity videos. Um, I'm going to show you how I do um, long periods of time. I use an actual technique, which I only started doing a couple months back, and it really works for me. It may not work for you, but it might be something you might even want to just try. So I'll be showing you that in a coming video. I might even show that in the next video. I'll, I'll think about that. So stay tuned. We are closing in on a thousand subscribers. I am, it's, it's a surreal moment for me right now, seeing these numbers. So thank you, thank you. I can't, I can't make a thousand subscribers on my own. It's because of you, so I, I truly appreciate it. If you wanna be part of the Side Hustle Help for TPT and Boom on Facebook, there'll be a link down below and you can, you can join us. It's, we're a small group and I love it. We are already starting to have little conversations, not much, but it just got going. If you wanna be part of the 90 day challenge, and you know what, even though we started this in May, choose your 90 days. It does, it can be 90 days starting today, right? Then hop on over to my blog. I will again put the link below and you can download a checklist and some information for free. I won't even ask you for your email. If you wanna subscribe, to my email list, thank you. I send out emails, I'm gonna try it every week. It might not happen. <laughs> Anyways, wherever you are in the world, I hope you and your family are staying safe and healthy. And we'll catch you in the next videos. Take care.